Welcome to the Daniels on Research. I'm David Daniel. I'm Daniel Willingham. This is the vlog where David and I pick an article that we think has some interesting implications for the classroom and talk about it and dissect it a little bit for you. Yeah, we've got a really good one this time. It's using design thinking to improve psychological interventions, colon, the case of the growth mindset during the transition to high school, Jaeger et al. Um, this is a really, really cool series, double studies, um, but it's a really, really neat paper to look at. Yeah, I really agree. And there, there's a couple of things I like about this so much. I mean, one of the, one of the things that we're going to get into is the methodology of this paper, which we think um, they just do a beautiful job with a difficult problem. So we'll talk about that. And the other thing is that this is about growth mindset. And of course, this has been a huge topic on the mind of so many teachers. There have been so many professional development sessions. Uh, and candidly, a lot of people have sort of lost heart. This growth mindset's an idea that seems really intuitive. It also seems really hopeful, like you want it to be right because you feel like it's going to have a good impact on your classroom. Uh, but then people have gotten kind of deflated about it and feel like this, this probably there's probably nothing to this. Right, um, and so that, the, then we get into this issue, what it are they getting deflated about? Right, right, right. And the, the, one of the nice things about this study, it starts talking about this it, you know, uh, growth mindset was actually a way to make, as a reaction almost to the self-esteem movement, where people were just saying, good job, good job, good job, just so these people would feel good. The theory was if you felt good, you'd learn better. And right. that turned out to not to be the case. It turns out you can feel really good and not learn. Right, <laughs> um, and Carol Zweck uh, said no, that it doesn't work that way, and and, and pr pr you know develop this theory over time uh, called growth mindset. Right. So just to elaborate a little bit, um, Dweck, there's sort of three components that Dweck says has to be in place. Uh, for a student to have a growth mindset. And so just to back up for a moment, the idea here is that these are beliefs that the student should hold about intelligence that will then affect motivation. And so the core beliefs are first, that intelligence is open to change. Second, that you need to really try, you need to put effort into what you're doing and it's probably gonna be difficult. Uh, and third, that you need feedback on how things are going. There's actually a fourth. I, I, I messed that up. You, <laughs> sorry. I'm, I, but I have a growth mindset. I'm sure I'll improve as I go. Uh, um, I'm still keeping this in the edit, by the way. No, totally. Um, <laughs> so, and the, the fourth element is uh, you, need to, you need to be inventive and you need to be creative in thinking about new ways of trying tasks, right? So there's really sort of three strategy components and one belief component. Um, but as we said, like people have tried to uh, sort of do homegrown uh, professional development to get teachers to exhibit a growth mindset and also ways that teachers can instruct students so that right. students will have a growth mindset. Um, and I don't know, David, I mean, do you want to add anything to that? Other the basic well, story is like, as we said, a lot of people have gotten depressed in trying to do this. Well, one of the hard parts about taking something from the research literature and deploying it at scale um, by people who don't know the nuance of that literature, um, is it going the wrong way? Um, so uh, posters, um, thanks for trying. You're, you know, you know, try harder. You're doing a good job. Um, you know, that was a self-esteem movement again. It just started taking on different words and people took this old template of promoting the child's effort as opposed to their progress or their strategies. Um, and that was, it, it, people were deploying it as a self-esteem intervention, um, which actually lost fidelity with the concept of, of the mindset. And, and as you pointed out earlier, it really kind of, it was initially supposed to be kind of an alternative to uh, the self-esteem movement. It kind of morphed into that and looking like the self-esteem movement. Um, and to her credit, Carol Dweck and, and some of her prominent students have been trying to sort of um, let people know where this is going wrong. Definitely. Uh, if you read their stuff, years. if you listen to their talks, they're really emphatic. They, they, they're really trying to tell you it's this, not that. Right, right. And the most often this, where it goes wrong, is sort of emphasizing effort at the expense of everything else. So if you're trying, you're kind of doing everything you're supposed to do, and Dweck's pointed out, um, you know, that's sort of like a, a, a participation trophy that sends a very wrong message. 
which, you know, the student doesn't succeed at something, you say, well, you tried. And uh, the implicit message there is, you know, there's no need to keep trying because let's, you know, let's or get better. It. There's no reason to get better. I got no my reason to get better or try something new. Right. Because like, that's probably about as well as you're going to do is the, of course, unspoken message. The teacher, which is the it. opposite of a growth mindset. Right. You so know. let's get into how they did this better. This has all been the problem stuff. Um, two parts to this experiment. The first uh, at the front end of the paper, they describe a way they try to refine um, the messaging of the growth mindset. So what they're going to do is they're going to do a web-based um, presentation. Students are going to sit through two presentations on the web uh, where they're teaching them basic principles of growth mindset and, and principles of the brain that are consistent with growth mindset. And consistent with the previous literature on deployment of, of growth mindset. Right. So there are, there's already a, um, uh, an intervention which has been shown to work, and they're going to try to refine it. Um, do you want to say a word or two about, because uh, I know this was a part that really spoke to concerns that you've had. Do would, you want to say a word or two about this and what you like so much about the way they went about this? Yeah, what they did is they didn't say, we tried this in our lab or with our small group of people or with this thing, so it has to work and we're going we're gonna to make a design with a weird control group that'll prove it works somehow. They didn't game it. Uh, what they, what I think was really, really interesting is they actually, the goal of the study was to take this initial design and adapt it to this context until, if, if and until it would work in some way to see, rather than have it very stagnant. And um, what I want to point out first off is some people would call this translation. This is adaptation. Right? And adaptation is at the core of implementation research, improvement science, design-based implementation research, um, learning science. Um, a lot of people don't know this. Learning science is actually this discipline where they actually do rapid evolution in the context of things that should work um, based on the literature until they do work. Um, the science of learning is what most people are calling learning science nowadays. Um, but it actually is a distinct field of study to the people who are adherents. But all these things are very evolutionary, rapid design models, and there's several other ones out there. Um, but it has to start with an initial design, like study one did. That initial design is the translation of it. Um, and then we take that and we try to iteratively try to adapt it to the context I want to deploy it in um, until, it, we, in, until we, it's been designed in a way we think could work and maybe it does or doesn't after that point, but we try our best to do that. The other thing I think is really interesting about that is that these things involve stakeholders at different levels, uh, typically, um, and they also uh, involve working with the people who you're deploying on, deploying it with, getting feedback. It could be database, it could be you know focus group, a whole bunch of other ways, trying to figure out how to make it work. The you also have to be careful though, because if in the hands of someone not trained in some of these designs you could actually adapt the secret sauce out of the, 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 the thing you're trying to, to make work. So for example, we try to make things more and more engaging. And sometimes we end up with negative correlations to impact learning, for example, because the adaptation to make it more engaging has taken the thing that actually worked out of it because that maybe was boring or you weren't being creative enough to design it well. So it's really important that the researchers in their initial designs or initial translations, if they get that far, say, make sure you corral this stuff off. This is the secret sauce. Don't move this out or take it away or, or, or degroup it to the point where it might not have impact. That's an empirical question that has to be looked at. So the way this played out, though you've just described sort of the, um, this this distinction between translation where you've got a theory and then you try you make a product to try and implement the theory uh, and adaptation where you've already got the product and now you're trying to tweak it and make it more and more effective exactly so the way that played out in this study was they did have an intervention that they had looked at before um that uh, i can remember what it was probably some overlap in the group uh, though not perfect to overlap in the research groups. So they took this to ninth graders. And, and to be clear, um, these are ninth graders. That's a perfect time to be looking at growth mindset because transition to high school is a time when, you know, students are a little bit at sea. They're feeling uncertain. And so it's a, it's a time when uh, you, uh, an intervention like this would be a really good idea. So they take it to ninth graders and they show it to them and they say, Basically, what do you think of this? Like, and they're showing them slides. They're literally showing them the intervention. 
uh, and giving students an opportunity to say, well, this is boring, or this part I don't understand, or that's kind of an interesting idea, or this makes me think of this. Uh, and the researchers are writing it all down to sort of get real-time feedback about what's going to be more or less effective and making these tweaks that you were referring to. Right, and it's important that the people who are making the tweaks knew the theory well enough to know where those the tweaks can be made without losing the fidelity to the core concept. Right, right. So then the next stage was they've got all these ideas about what they're going to do. They do a big study where they're doing what they call an A-B comparison. They've got... Um, which is cool, which is very cool. If you have a sample size cool. for that, it's very yeah. cool. Yeah, and so this now they're not doing in ninth graders. They want a big population of people, and it's hard to get a big population of ninth graders. So they actually did this on Amazon's Mechanical Turk, and they knew, like, we know we're dealing with 18 to 65-year-olds. We don't know if it's going to translate, but we're going to try it. But the A-B business is uh, they're, they're trying to decide, for example, uh, should we talk about effort in this way or should we talk about effort in that way? Should we talk about it as you're really going to have to pay attention to this or should we say we're really going to have to focus on this? I, I made that example up, but you get the idea. Things that seem like they could be really trivial tweaks, but they want to get experimental data to see whether one or another is preferred, one or another is going to end up making a difference. Yeah, and A-B testing is being done to us all the time if you spend any time on the web. Oh, so that's right. you don't know what A-B testing is, basically Google put out two versions of, of, a, of a page, and the one that's getting the most hits will work from that one. Now we'll compare it to another one. We right. keep A, B, A, B, and, and we can evolve with those simple comparisons as long as we have enough people to right. keep it. Right. So, they, so in those comparisons, I think they were at some like 3,700 people or something like that. that they yeah, were, it, was, it was awesome. They were doing on that uh, at that stage. So they end up packaging all this, and now they've got what they started with, which worked, right? This is a previous paper. This intervention worked. And now they're going to compare it to the new one that they've developed to see if that one works even better. Right. Uh, so that's study number one. And that one they do do in ninth graders. Uh, but then the really exciting one, we, and we love that just for the for the method. The design, yeah. Yeah, for the design, because it's something that, you know, we've been whining for a long time that, that people ought to do more of that. And David's been... Well, you've been discussing, I've been whining. Yeah, <laughs> but you've been a much more articulate whiner about it than I have. But the truth is, I mean, we've always recognized this is really difficult, time-consuming work you know it, it would be worth it but we understand why you know not everybody is resourced to do this people who are you know looking down the barrel of tenure are, are thinking I got to get publications out so you're not researchers are generally not incentivized to do this type of incredibly meticulous work and it's also important to know this is out of their wheelhouse you know one of the things that a researcher will get to the to the end of their expertise and say look what else do you want me to do right. I got an idea this Right. Right. Um, think about what the next steps would be before you start telling everybody to do this thing you found. If you have a proof of concept, right, you have a, um, a greenhouse study where you went into a, a classroom and under your conditions, it worked. But did you design yeah. it for their conditions? Right. That's what we're seeing here, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, so then experiment two sort of transitions into the second part of uh, the second thing that we wanted to talk about, which was how to think about growth mindset actually working in classrooms. So in experiment two, um, they had a number of features, again, of the experimental design, uh, which was really cool. One thing they did was they went to 10 high schools. They've got, uh, again, around 3,000 students, I think, in experiment two. Um, is that right? Yeah, it was, it was 30. Oh, and I made a mistake. I actually have the numbers. It was 7,500 uh, in that first phase. It wasn't 3,000. It was 3,600 in the second one. Uh, we, we, we can just use precise terms. This is a vlog. Just say a lot. Right. <laughs> Boatloads of subject. <laughs> um, but so the cool features, one was they wanted to get close to 100% of the students in the high school. So they don't want, what they're concerned about here is selection effects, that the people who, the, the kids who opt in are different than the kids who aren't interested in doing it, or the Which kids- It's often the case. I'm sorry? It's very often the case. Very often the case, or the kids whose parents won't, uh, won't uh, let them do it, or, right. uh, and so forth, right? So they get, they get over 95% of the kids within a high school uh, involved in this. The other thing that I thought was really cool, they got a, independent, they hired an independent 
third party research firm to collect and clean their data. Um, so that, that's addressing uh, a concern that I've heard people express, which is, it seems a little weird to me. It's like, it's always Carol Dweck or her students who are doing this mindset work and, and getting it to work. Um, and, you know, not accusing anyone of anything, but it's kind of weird if they're the only ones who can ever, ever get this thing to work. And there's two reasons for that, right? That wasn't more than two, but for example, you could have the drug company thing. Well, the drug company is making this because they want to get famous or make right. profits or whatever. The other thing is, is they know it well enough with all the nuances we've been talking about and everything to get it to work. Right. But the, the issue for implementation is, is, it, is there a design that can be made to work when you're not in the room, researcher? Right. And that's what they're working on here. Exactly, exactly. So the outcome is they, um, they administer these, you know, they have the kids watch these, um, uh, participate in these, uh, uh, these web-based uh, experiences, uh, and they find uh, improvements in GPA. So it's, it's grades are the outcome that they're interested in at the end of ninth grade. Uh, and they get an interaction, so they don't get any boost for the kids who generally have high GPAs. It's the low achieving kids where you see some movement. Uh, and the truth is it's a pretty small effect, but they nevertheless, you, you do see uh, an effect from the growth mindset intervention. Let's talk about the, the, the two things. The, the one is that it worked for this group versus that group, and then the effect size. I think that um, th there's a possible ceiling effect just with the, with the higher GPA. If you're using GPA and people are A students, especially if you're in a place where there's grade inflation, A students, where are they, how are you going to do this using um, grades as your dependent variable? Right. In other words, how, are, how are grades are not going to get that much higher. If you're already mostly getting A's, there's, there's not much room to move. Right. And if you're getting a B plus, you got three points to move up, right? Well, it's A minus A. So two, two points. You have more, more, more room to go as, as you're down around C or so. Right. Um, and the other thing is, the the effect size which is maybe four percent isn't that impressive right until you compare it with how easy it is to offer this intervention to the students right then it is impressive right yeah compared to other interventions that people have considered to me you know the the starkest uh counter example is always something like reducing class size it's hard to think of a more expensive intervention. You're hiring more teachers. You're going to need more physical plant because you, you need more classrooms and so forth. Um, so if you're going to invest that much, you want a huge effect size. This costs you next to nothing. All you're asking is a couple of hours of kids' times at the beginning of the year, and then you get this uh, admittedly small bump, but you get you get something out of it. So. And there's two things that the authors point out in the discussion, which I think are germane to this, is first off, there is no magic bullet, right? So if you, if you are a, mind, a growth mindset adherent, and that's the only thing you do, um, they're trying to tell you, look, this is done in concert or combination with other things. And by the way, we haven't looked at the interaction with this versus those other things yet, but we know that we can get this hit with that. And um, so this, it's an it's a, it's a incremental thing. If I can do a couple hours and get 4%, think about 4% is, and they point this out, over uh, you know, 5,000 kids, right? right. So, so we, we actually it looks really, really good. Relatively low costs. And it's one of the things we could do with low cost that gets us impact. Four or five of these things, little things you can do, little tweaks, kind of like Moneyball. Don't, don't work for, don't, don't hire the one star, get a bunch of people around that can make a good team, right? right. A, a good curriculum. Right. Who gradually build up the kind of success that we're hoping for. I, I think that's so important. And we, we sort of come back full circle to where we started with the frustration that a lot of educators have felt with mindset, uh, with growth mindset. I think they have felt like this was presented to them as this is going to be, you know, this is going to be a game changer. Uh, and the researchers knew it wasn't going to be a game changer because what you're looking at is motivation. And everybody knows there's lots of factors that go into motivation. They're suggesting this is one. Uh, and they've come up with a very um, uh, inexpensive in terms of time and resources way of moving the needle a little bit. 
And as you say, like if you can get a handful of these, then you're really going to start to see something much more impressive. Right. I mean, imagine a mindset intervention, intervention, right? And then other things that actually teach you to use the strategies and tools that will help you get there more efficiently with, or with higher impact. It's not, you, if you just do a mindset intervention, you don't have the things students need to actually achieve. Um, it, 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 it's very frustrating, right. for one, and you're not going right. to get there. So in conjunction with other sorts of strategies, tools, whatever, um, pedagogical techniques, you got something. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point, right? So now I've got the right attitude, but I don't know what to do with it. Yeah, right. And so, yeah, you have, you've got to give me those tools as well. The, yeah. the other thing I wanted to be sure we mentioned is sort of, um, again, taking a step back and talk, talking very big picture on sort of where are we in mindset research. To me, the, uh, the literature is fairly clear now. There have been follow-ups to this paper. So this paper came out in 2016, and there have been a couple of follow-ups and replications that indicate you can, you can see this uh, elsewhere. There have also been other research groups that have used this technique and have found really similar results. So I think this is holding up really well. So in terms of intervention, this very meticulously designed web-based intervention where nothing is left to chance because it's all recorded, that consistently works. When people try and bring it into the classroom, as we were saying at the beginning of the session, it's not robust enough. My growth mindset's not that easy uh, to, to bring into a classroom. Uh, and if, so if you leave stuff to chance, it, it's not going to work. And there are, there are lots of, there was a meta-analysis published within the last five years that showed that, and there were 30 papers or so. And most of the time uh, when people have tried it, it hasn't worked. The third thing, though, is the, the overall theory, this idea that beliefs particular beliefs about intelligence and how to get intelligence cluster with certain types of behavior. So people who have a growth mindset are more interested in taking on challenging work. People have a fixed mindset, like to take on easy tasks so that it looks like they're smart. Again, it's not a huge effect, but it's fairly consistent. That's, that's replicated uh, fairly, uh, fairly consistently and in fact is replicated within this paper. Yeah, I think it's important that this is exciting. Um, and the the way that they did it is actually a good model for lots of things. But the conclusion is, it's not that easy to get something off the shelf that works everywhere. Right. And that's what people look at looked at, at growth mindset. At. A lot of people did. A yeah. lot of things. A lot of this research, you know, brain based or this or that, right off the shelf. Just go read this book. Go do it. It's just it doesn't do it that. It doesn't work that way. Right. And they've showed you one technique to actually help uh, get it to work in the context that you're in. Yeah, absolutely. The exception, I think, is all of my books, which work right off the shelf, and they're just fabulous. Yeah, I leveled my Christmas tree with one last yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're so useful. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, yeah, so it's actually really fun to talk about a paper we're really excited about. I imagine in this blog, we're going to spend a fair amount of time beating up on stuff. But um, yeah, this was, this was really a pleasure to read this, uh, to reread this paper. Yeah, and if you walk away from this paper just saying, it, it ain't easy. Yeah. But you can do it. Maybe you can develop a growth mindset. Right. <laughs> nice. Uh, so that's maybe a good, uh, that's probably a really good uh, note to close on, I think. Got anything else for us, David? I'm all good, man. All right. We will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.